and thank you so much for being at home once again. It's very sweet of you. I hope the day's been all right so far. Yes? Right. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's all right with them, but how about you? Now, little, tell you what I've got for you. It's a rather a secret trip. We're going to neck off and have a look at the Côte d'Azur. If you ever wanted to go there, or been there, come and have a look, because this is where this dish comes from. It's super. This, here we go. Along the Côte d'Azur, have you ever made this trip, anybody? Yes, you have? Yes. Wonderful. Don't put your hand up, otherwise you might have to leave the room. Um, <laughs> just around the corner and you come now into one of the most beautiful harbours in the world. And there, certainly, I want one of these days to tie up my six-foot pram dinghy. But you get boats from all over the world here. Los Angeles, from Rotterdam, from Hamburg, from Ton. <laughs> from uh, Stockholm and Glasgow even. I didn't even know they had large boats in Glasgow. And they had the most magnificent, wonderful hotels along the front there. Great zoological gardens where you can nick in and order a front trotter of an elephant when they're in season. And you can sit outside at La Chevelle, for example, or the, at Palerme. They've got all different types of cuisine which they serve there. You know, Scandinavian, the Pension Scandinave and listen to Greek music and this restaurant chez Bidou, which I'd always thought was something else, um, is, uh, or you can go fishing on the bank like Etienne, who's our retired uh, head waiter from London. You can tell by the glance, can't you? And we were there and the chef prepared this fantastic large fish for us. And he flamed it, it's on a bed of fenui, of fennel. And it was fantastic. But then after that, we had a lobster dish. And I can't tell you what that lobster dish was like. It was unbelievable. It, uh, and we'd run out of film. And so, <laughs> so sometime I'll play you the piece of film again and show you how to cook the fish. But a lobster, wow. Oh, you know, and, and the chef in this particular restaurant, he was a funny guy because he told us that he was with André Simon in the First World War, in the trenches, and that André Simon, I don't know whether you know this, who is world president of all the wine and food societies, all over the world, he's the boss man, a super bloke, really fantastic chap. Apparently he got the croix de guerre for putting bully beef and a bit of parsley and some pepper into an ammunition box and hauling it up to the front and cooking the generals their lunch out of this and he got a cry to go for it which we, we took that with a pinch of salt but there's a classic story uh, <laughs> I didn't even get that uh, we, there's, a, there's a classic story about the first world war and I think it's long enough ago to be able to tell it it was told to us in these kitchens and it was put in the first person and I take that with a considerable pinch of salt but I'd like to tell it to you because I think it's a very funny story uh, is that this man Pierre you know, he's a Frenchman called Pierre, but apparently every Frenchman is called Pierre. I mean, there's Pierre Trudeau and Pierre, La and Pierre Larue's Tarek. <laughs> no, Pierre La Who wrote all over the tablecloth? <laughs> Me. Oh, Pierre Toulouse Lautrec, of course, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're in for it today. Uh, then, you see, he just said to himself, he was cut off from his birth bourguignon and he's up to his hocks in this uh, court bouillon in the bottom of the trenches. And so he thought to himself, I'm going to do something for France. I'm not going to get bogged down here. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something terribly French. Which, well, you can work out for yourself what that is. <laughs> and so he cradled, he cradled his rifle in his arms and he went underneath the French barbed wire, across no man's land, under the German barbed wire, right up to the trenches like this and said, Karl, Karl, are you there, Karl? And this German said, yeah, and put his head up and he went, boom, like that. <laughs> so he went back and he was thinking, oh, I say, you know, oh, moi, merveilleuse. And he didn't tell anybody. Next night he nicked out under again, boom, 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 through there, under the German, boom, 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 boom. Oh, Carl, Carl, you there, Carl? And Carl, oh, boom, like this. <laughs> and he reported to his general and he said, General, I do this and everything else. And the general said, oh, c'est merveilleux. <laughs> and they, da -da -da -dum 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 and they're all saluting madly and they have this great parade and they give him lots of little red things to wear all over him 
as you know, it's, it's like a rash when you work for the French government. And so eventually, it comes to the day when the Germans hear this on this big megaphone they've got, the listening post, so they get hold of this marvellous bloke and they said, you will go out underneath the wire, across no man's land, underneath the wire, and do the same thing to them. So away it goes like this, underneath this wire, across no man's land, underneath the other wire like this, comes up to the edge of the trench and says, Pierre, Pierre, are you there, Pierre? And the voice comes back, is that you, Carl? He said, yeah, boom. <laughs> Here it goes, uh, two pans on the heat, one on M high and the other one also on M high. There are the two pans, down they go, and this is what we use. Now, I, yeah, you might find that a little hard to believe what that is. That is the tail of a, an Australian an Australian crayfish. Uh, not, not, not from Shediac by the sea, but just from Australia. And look, what you do is, this has been taken off from the head because I, I actually flew it in order to get it here. And you just take off that meat which actually lies within the head part of it. By the way, this is not a lobster, this is a crayfish. Even though people in Australia may call it a lobster, it isn't a lobster. Lobster has nippers. It's a bit odd to work out actually how a crayfish propagates itself, but um, in fact it does not have nippers. It really is um, a longoose. It doesn't have the big claws in the front. Okay, now what you do is you have here that this is, this would come normally of a seven pound lobster. Now, a seven-pound lobster, depending upon where you are, will cost you about $17, which is utterly ridiculous, and uh, somebody should do something about it. it it's, it's worse than the American dollar. Uh, this, you then, you, you now take hold of a, of a relatively large knife, and you cut through the natural divisions. It's almost like the vertebrae of a spine, you'll see. Um, as, you, as you sit up and sit down, you can imagine, so a lobster sits up and sits down. And you cut through the natural divisions, making what is in fact the true collop. Now that's a, that's a collop of lobster in the most beautiful way possible. As you keep on going down, unfortunately, they keep on getting just a trifle smaller as you go through, but you know the sort of people that you want to feed the largest one to, so maybe that's yourself. And never be shy about that, incidentally. I always give the very best food that I cook at a dinner party to myself. <laughs> always. Never do I give it to anybody else. As far as I'm concerned, hospitality is wonderful. I'm glad they're there, but I'm going to get tucked into what's going on. <laughs> right, so there, there you see... That'll have to be for me. Um, now, there are five pieces there, which just go down in, in the... And this is for four people, so maybe you can just give yourself two of the small pieces. But five pieces, and now you take a little clarified butter and just pour that into the bottom of the pan. Right, in it goes. Look at that. that that's green lobster. That means that it's uncooked. And down they go in the traditional, classical way to be cooked. That other bit is just left on one side. Now, with this, you turn the heater just down a little because all you want to do is to... You want to clench its flesh up a little bit. And it gets what they call uptight. <laughs> right? um, and that, that is exactly what it does. You must clench it up, and then when you pour in the elixir of flavours which bless this golden lobster, the whole thing just melts out and becomes as tender as a newborn bird in your arms, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, so you just, you just flip it then. You flip your lobster. And just whip it across like that, and you'll see that it's just scorched one side. Just tinily scorched it. Now, this one's a bit of a trial, so I just put it on its back. And you'll see then, suddenly, it starts to go red. It gets blushed. It, the whole shell is a miracle of nature and cookery when it changes its colour like that. Right, now, on top of that, we mill just a little tiny touch of salt, freshly ground salt over the top. You should see the way this is done. It's magnificent. And then, <coughs> not the way I'm doing it, the way the professional did it. It's, and then you take a large Spanish onion. Well, I'll grow a bunion on your Spanish onion. Do you know the rest of it? <laughs> eh? You do? Oh, I think it's, I think it's marvellous. I don't understand it, but it's, it goes, if I catch you bending tonight, pum pum. Um, right, <coughs> now, what you do is you take this knife 
and you go through this onion in lateral incisions. Then you go through in horizontal incisions, like so. And then when you've done that, you go through in vertical incisions, or whatever you call it. Uh, and what you do, of course, is you get out little cubes of onion, except for that last bit, which you save for a New Yorker onion sandwich, which comes on later. <laughs> then you take the whole of that mixture there, which is much better than pulping it or scraping up. Have you ever tried to scrape an onion with a teaspoon? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's one of the most ridiculous things you can do in the kitchen. So just do that. Sprinkle the top over the top there with that, with that onion, right? And so the onion now is just blessing that flesh of that, it's fantastic. And then on top of that, four fluid ounces of a good, light, crisp, dry white wine, which you literally meet out as... <laughs> and... This is my... That's my drinking wine, that's my cooking wine, and somebody's put a cork in it. Right, one, two, three, four fluid ounces of that, of my drinking wine. <laughs> Into there and you just cover it up. <coughs> I've been going for just a couple of minutes, just simmering away so that the juice pervades the whole of that. You then take some tarragon, about half a teaspoonful of, you know, tarragon? Um, dried tarragon leaves, and if you can't grow them all the year round, then use dried, but otherwise use fresh. And just let that go down, um, as you just, it's, it's the same thing as powdering it, and also you can get away with less aftershave lotion. <laughs> and, um, and you've got green hands, look at that, they're a filthy mess. It's, it's rather nice, you know, you put your hands around her hair and say, darling, and she goes... <laughs> Very odd. So then you just... Right. So that's it. Now, when you've got to that stage, and the onion, of course, by this point in time, has softened up terrifically. So you just simply take the whole lot of that, and you, you, you take the whole bit out. Uh, then you've got to get the rest of the onions out, so... <laughs> you take... You swash the pan. Swash the pan out with wine. And pour that in as well. That's fine. That's marvellous. And then you see, underneath what you've got is the pure, beautiful drippings of it. And not much onion left in the bottom of the pan. So then you just take the collops and paste them back into that pan again. Now that sounds silly, doesn't it? But it really doesn't work terribly well if you don't do that. So you just put that back there and throw that stuff away. Or put it in the children's sandwiches the next day. That's fine. <laughs> now you just melt that mixture of tarragon and wine over the top of that dish there and then you get hold of some butter and, you know beautiful fresh butter two ounces of fresh butter and you stir it into the bottom of the pan and just let it melt out there and get a couple of tablespoons full of sherry and with the sherry you just oh, this is so, oh, uh, just two tablespoons full of sherry from Harris to Fonterra, what blessed things you've done for the English. Right, and you then, you then just stir that, put the lid on and let it go for just five minutes longer and at a very low, gentle heat and the butter mingles with the sherry and the wine, it's fantastic. Right now, here on this pan, this pan is all heated up, into that some clarified butter which should be really hot and quite a lot of clarified butter. I sloshed this up today. This is not going to be in any cookbook or anything else because this is completely brand new. You take an artichoke bottom, if you'll forgive the expression, and you cut that, those into half. And by the way, do make sure when you do this that you really rinse properly as much as you can these artichoke bottoms. They come out. Have you tasted them when they're straight out of the can? Yes. Yeah. You know, they're really bad. I mean, my, my knife will go black soon if I don't, if I don't run. It would. It would eat through the end of the night. And then you get hold of this mixture here and you get into a bowl, which is a cast iron bowl. I must say, I, I am absolutely delighted with myself because normally I am a passable cook. But today I have been brilliant because this two fluid ounces of oil, two fluid ounces of wine vinegar onto the top of that. And then all you do is take a clove of garlic um, and you just smash the clove of garlic down onto the board, take the clove of garlic and whack that into there, right? 
Now, you just take one half an onion. You really don't want too much onion. That's quite a large onion, actually. And then you slice that onion finely. That must be sliced very finely indeed, you know, right the way through, and make sure that all those divisions come apart. Then, into that very, very hot butter, right? Wham! Go the onions. And into there as well also goes this finely chopped and shredded uh, the part of that lobster, you remember, where we just took the tail, a bit where it goes on the head, and you stir that in with it as well. Then, very simply, you just get some freshly ground pepper. Mill it over there. <laughs> Mill it over there. I need a bit in there, too. Time and motion start. Look at, look at that. Look. Oh. Mm. and sniff it as you go. Then all you do is you just simply take some mushrooms, about two ounces of mushrooms, finely sliced, and put them raw onto the top there. Roll a lemon. Hard, you know, really stamp on it, roll it, lie on it, do whatever you have to do to it. And then, and then puncture it, both ends, like that. If you puncture it both sides, you get the juice of one lemon, half side, the juice of half a lemon, and just squeeze it out and <laughs> absolutely no pips whatsoever. It works terribly well if you're strong enough. And then just flip that mixture together. Oh, caught it in the pan. And then a red pimento <laughs> for color out of a tin. And just slice that red pimento up into very thin slices and just scatter that now over the top of those frying onions and those onions are cracking away like you'd never believe. <laughs> now, just fry that together, have this ready on the side, it's beautifully dressed, clear the decks for action and get out the dish from the warmer drawer. <laughs> then get out the lobster and the lobster is beautifully cooked now. Just serve that up in a nice dish there with the shell around the outside, just popping it down. Beautifully tender, easy to do dish that this is. And then that reduction of this mixture here of that butter and the sherry. Just let's sip it once more. Let's sip it once more. Sip once more. Just to make quite sure that any of the pieces which might be in it are removed. Look at that. That mixture is the most unrivaled thing you've ever tasted in lobster, ever. Then you get this salad here with those mushrooms and those artichokes which are throbbing uh, with, with this, with underneath there. And you get that mixture which is so hot now with those pieces of lobster and, and, and that and that and you just douse it over the top, red hot that is, and it cooks, it actually warms through the, um, the, the oh, yeah, just a little dash of sherry. That's what I do. Let's swash the pan out with just a little dash of sherry, and that just over the top of the whole thing. Unbelievable flavor. And then toss that together so that all the onions and the artichokes and everything else are mixed together. And that beautiful little salad arrangement goes with that lobster beurre blanc, which comes from France, and that comes from me, just for you. Right. That's, that's the bit that fell on the floor for me. And how about that? I'm going to give the largest piece to my guest. Well, oh, gosh, I fill myself with enthusiasm sometimes. And there, just a spoonful of that beautiful, wonderful sauce that goes over the top. And then let's have a dig in here, too, because that, although it looks like hell, is actually the most incredible uh, mixture that you could possibly have with this, just dressed on the side. It's a simple dish, and it's something which I think, you know, it's expensive, I know. But, oh, boy. You know, sometimes just you think of something, uh, some of the other things that you spend your money on, and uh, and think of perhaps that you might give somebody the delight of serving a succulent, beautiful, butter-drenched thing like that. <laughs> to tell you that it is slightly better than the chef made it in France. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do 
you try it, if you uh, bypass the lobster and just make the salad, well then, great. Whatever you do, have fun, have some people in, and enjoy yourselves, and give a little hospitality out of your house to other people. I think that would be nice. Until next time, God bless you.